uh, cave of Hira. And right there, actually, uh, he himself was scared. And he didn't know what he was seeing. When he ran to his house, and Khadija, his wife, Khadija al-Kubra, radiallahu anha, was known for her shilm, for her wisdom, and for her knowledge, and for her education. So the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, coming home, trembled and uh, scared. He was telling his wife, zammiluni, zammiluni, which means hide me, hide me, because he was very scared of what he had seen. He never seen an angel before. And Archangel Gabriel, alayhi wa sallam, had told him, I am. Gabriel, I am the angel of Allah, and I am saying, telling you that you are going to be the message, you're going to be the messenger for this ummah, for the nation of Prophet Muhammad and for this world. So it's not that uh, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, didn't get the message first from Jibreel, but being the Prophet, the way the humble nature of the Prophet وسلم, he was saying himself, he was saying, that I don't know if I am seeing any, uh, I'm hearing voices and I'm seeing uh, things. So he himself wasn't really sure. So when he came to Khadija, radiallahu anha, Khadija, uh, having knowledge of the people of Ahl al-Kitab and other nations, which means the Jews and the Christians and al-Hanif, al-Din al-Hanif, which means the, de- the religion of Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam, then she knew an angel is not going to be present at the time when a man is going to uh, 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 have a privacy with his wife. So when she told him, sit on my right side, that's okay, the angel can be there. When she told him, sit on the left side, then that's okay, the angel can be there. But when she told him to sit in a position as a husband would be sitting with his wife, then the angel, out of uh, respect and honor for for this for the for the relationship of a husband and wife, then the angel would leave them for their own privacy. Now, okay, what's guys, the problem? A bit over. Having a woman. What's that, the problem? That. I think the, pro- the brother, the brother uh, Christian, have a problem with a husband listening to his wife. For us, this is the biggest lesson that you and your wife are two of one, that you always ask your wife and ask for some uh, guidance from her as well. And that okay, takes up. away all the fallacies about Islam that they treat their wives as a second class. Okay, Thank time's you. up. Thank you for your question. Okay, good. A uh, little bit over 90 seconds there. Uh, Christian friends, you go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you. He, you know, he said, and uh, uh, as we understand from what he said, that when the prophet, he have a sexual position with his wife, the angel, he decide to leave. Now, then, how Khadija, she learned that angels don't stay if there is sex in the room. Like, you know, me, myself, I am an adult man. I never heard that angels will leave me. So what if I am having sex with my wife? You know, she, he's an angel. He will not get... Uh, excited, he will not get, uh, forgive me for the word, horny, he will not get, uh, he is, he's an angel, you know, and according to Islam, angels always surround in you, wherever you go, there's two angels, one in the left and one in the right, so even when you have sex, they are with you, even Muhammad, he said, before you have intercourse with your wife, you have to say the word, Bismillah, Bismillah, and, you know, seek refuge of Allah before you have intercourse with your wife. So Allah will protect you. How will he protect you? Because the angels will keep the Satan away from you. So angels even with you, according to your prophet, even when you have sex. So there is no reason for the angel to get out. This is number one. Number two, you said that the angel told him, I am Jibreel. I want you to show me that. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. I will post it. I want you to open the link, please. Hadith number 4626, Kitab al-Tafsir. There is nowhere when Muhammad, he saw the angel first time, that the angel, he said to him, you know what, I am Jibreel. Actually, Jibreel, he did not mention his name at all. He started right away, he came to Muhammad, he said to him, read. And you will see something there too, very weird in this story. He starts squeezing him. Now, if I asked you what the squeezing have to do with an angel speaking to his prophet, I don't know what you, 
I do not know what you will say to me. But still, I want you to read again, please, the hadith I posted. I hope, you know, because I cannot uh, go and log on in the chat. Somebody else is posting the hadith for me. So I want you, please, to open the, the, the link and read for me. And you will see that Muhammad, until that time, he never heard of, of the name Jibreel. He had no idea. And the one who told him about who is the name of the angel, it was Waraq ibn Nawfal. Waraq ibn Nawfal, he is the one who said, Oh, this is a Jibreel. So, what you said to me with my respect to you is absolutely not true. Secondly, what we see in here, that the family of his wife, they are the one who is deciding that, okay, you know what, you are a prophet, and this is an angel. And even they gave him the name. Now, how Waraq ibn Nawfal he knew? He is a prophet. He, he was inspired. How many prophets in Islam? It's supposed that it's only one, and the one is Muhammad. So what do you like to say to me, sir? Mike is yours. May I go ahead? Yeah, please. All right, thank you very much. First of all, Warakat ibn Nawfal did not mention to him that this is Jibreel. Warakat said to him, this is what used to come to Musa. And I wish I were there when your people will chase you away from this city in order to help you. The hadith you are referring to in Sahih al-Bukhari is an authentic hadith. And I wish that you would go and read the hadith again word by word in order to better understand as you are an Arab and me, not an Arab, being able to understand this Arabic language could clearly see that what you are saying word to word is not actually what the hadith is talking about. Now, in order for somebody to tell Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that he, the, 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 the creature of God, he saw, he did not see Jibreel as is, as he is, but he looked at his right and left, but see that Jibreel actually covers all area. He could not see Jibreel as is, as Allah created him. The only one time he saw Jibreel as he was was in the Isra al Mi'raj when they reached Shadatul Muntaha. And I will come to that if you want to later to show the authenticity of the Word of God as a miracle that people can clearly understand. Now, back to your question. You are using Sahih al-Bukhari. So if you think that the revelation that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, brought is not true, so how you, as an Arab, who understands Arabic, want to use that same revelation in order to contradict this revelation if contradict is there, as you can see. But no way. But you are using this because you know for sure that this is a good reference that you can turn to in order to justify whatever misunderstanding or misinterpretation or miscomprehension you may have on the verses of the Quran. Now back to our topic because we do not want to step away from our topic dealing with hadith while we have the verses of God in the Quran that is the very fire of the truth in the Bible, in other books. I'm glad that this is not our topic today. We would like to debate this one more time with you. But I want you, with all due respect, to show me in the Quran, as you said earlier, that it is a book of ikhtilaf. It is a book of full of contradiction. Show me, pick up the Quran. I understand and I know you must have one right in front of you. Open the Quran and show me where in the Quran has Allah revealed verses contradicting one to another. And I may today and hope but from this session, from this time, you will understand the language of Arabic better today. Okay, time is up. Okay, thank time you very, is up. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Well, first, uh, first, well, I want, I want, uh, I want, uh, 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 back. Okay, I want. Now, let me say this here uh, to uh, the Muslim uh, 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 representative. Uh, we. Uh, I don't think the hadith is off limit here. And the reason I say 
You know, the reason why I say the high D is not off limit because uh, it is uh, second in authority to the Quran. There are Muslims who quote the high D. Of course, they quote parts of the high D that they think is in agreement with the Quran. Uh, so I don't think quoting the high D is uh, uh, off limits here. So, well, if I may, if I may bring clarification to you, I think we all understand the English language because the topic is Quran is the Quran the word of God. If you say is the Quran and Hadith a revelation from God, yes, then we can open that we 